Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how to make your very own Robin box. Now, in the previous videos, we've looked at how to make a blue tip and great tip box. And that's pretty much the same design, just with a different size hole at the front of it. So if you haven't seen that, do check it out. On, and I'll put a link at the end of this video to that one. It's a great way to uh, entertain the kids for a few hours and make another home for birds in your garden, of course. So do check that one out. But today... We're looking at robins now robin the quintessential uh, i think it's britain's favorite bird for as long as i can remember now so <laughs> you can't really beat them they do of course prefer to nest in an open fronted box although i have seen them nest on things such as the big jumbo bags that you get your sand and bulk aggregates from or if you're building a, a patio or something i've seen one nest on top of one of those about well two foot off the floor uh, in a garage before so yeah they will nest almost anywhere they'll nest in old kettles people have used boots turned upside down on walls they will nest almost anywhere however this is a specific box designed to attract them to your own garden now what you're going to need for this project are as follows a saw good old trusty saw this is just a, a coarse timber saw um, do be careful obviously these have some quite sharp teeth when they're new Try and use a newish one because it'll make the cutting a lot more easier, uh, a lot easier, so to say. And obviously, don't use one you've been cutting roots within your own back garden. Otherwise, you'll be there for uh, forever and a day. You're then going to need a hammer as well. A nice, simple way of putting these boxes together. You can screw them. I'm just going to nail these together because they're so easy to put together. And the nails work fine, of course. And it means you don't have to have one of these, an impact driver <laughs> or a drill. Uh, and so therefore you're also going to need some of these now these are 40 millimeter round wire nails just with a flat head and you can get these from your local diy store no problem at all and uh, yeah just get yourself a small bag of those to uh, to get you through the project now the only other thing you're going to need it depends where you're fixing this box now if you're fixing it to an external wall or a garage or something like that firstly check that it is your wall of course Oh, tall. Tawny owl there. <laughs> Two tall tawny owls calling to each other. I'm actually in a, a workshop um, where I'm working at the moment in Cheshire. It's completely dark outside, but uh, nice and light in here. So I thought I'd bring you this video because uh, it is bird box season. Those tawnies going mad now. Twilight, great time of night for them. Yeah, so I digress slightly. If you're fixing it to a wall, firstly check it's your wall you're allowed to fix it to, of course. And you're also going to need some of these, which are called raw plugs. Uh, and they go into the wall to then enable you to put a screw into them to fix the box safely to a wall. I have, I won't be showing you because it's dark, uh, how to fix these to a wall. But um, again, there's many videos on how to put screws in walls and that on YouTube. Uh, I don't need to go down that level, I'm sure. But And then obviously you're going to need a few screws. I just normally use a 50 mil. Uh, sheridized screw uh, for outdoor use which lasts an amazing amount of time so that and some raw plugs if you're fixing it to a wall of course if you're fixing it to a fence or you know an old tree stump or something like that then obviously the uh, round wire nails will suffice no problem at all I think that is all you are going to need so hammer nails uh, saw and the wood itself which I've got a three meter length here of gravel board what is known as a gravel board in the uk it's pressure treated timber six inches by an inch thick or 150 mil by 25 mil um, if you prefer to work in metric but uh yeah just any length of this will do of course to do this box you'll only need about four foot of this timber uh, i just economized because i'm going to make a couple and bought a three three odd meter length but uh yeah six by one pressure treated timber i would recommend getting pressure treated timber purely because if you get just plain sawn uh, planed sawn timber then um, obviously it's not been treated you're going to have to paint it otherwise uh, it will rot of course outside so without further ado let's have a look at some measurements and see what you need to be cutting out of your timber okay so i've got my six inch by one inch or 100 and 50 mil by 25 mil gravel board now and what I've done is I've just marked out uh, a few of the sections now this is exactly the same measurements bar the front as what you will have seen if you've watched the previous video on blue tits and great tits uh, or the blue tit and great tit box now firstly if you start with the roof you're going to want a 200 mil uh, top for your roof 
I'm just going to mark that so I know which bit's which. That's your roof. The back section again is 300 mil. It'll be on there for back. And then you have your two sides, which the front is going to be 175 mil and the back 200 mil to allow for a slope, of course, to put your roof on so the rain is shed nicely away from the face of these boxes. And again, you've got another section which is 175 mil and then 200 mil at the back. So I'm going to go on and get those cut now and then we will cut a separate piece for the front in a moment. Okay, so now you have your two side pieces. Again, you can see we've put an angle on that so that the higher piece goes at the back on the, against the back plate, the lower part at the front, obviously, to allow the roof to shed the water off. So we have two angled sides. We have our 200 millimeter roof. This, by the way, is, as I say, 175 meters by 200 mil at the back and your 300 millimeter black back plate. Now, if you're not sure of any of these dimensions again, then do check the BTO website, the British Trust for Ornithology. It's where I go on a regular basis for all my box sizes. Absolutely fantastic resource and a great website, if nothing else. So uh, we've got the four pieces now, the main pieces that we need to get going. So all we're gonna do is, as per the last video, I'm just going to mark, because I know it worked on the last video again, pick my tape up, um, 40 millimeters, along each side and make a little pencil mark. And that wants to be on the side so you can see, and you'll see why in a moment. So 40 millimeters along, about an inch and a half in old money. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sit the two, take your two side pieces with the shorter side facing away from you, put that down on your surface, get it so you can see. And then we're going to put the back plate on and we're just going to line up that line that we've just drawn. As you can see. So that line there that we've just drawn, we're going to line that up just so we know exactly where to set our two sides. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, and when they're set, we can then think about nailing the back pieces on. So I'm just gonna move that back here a little bit. Shift the camera up. Okay, so I now have this side set in place. So I'm gonna use my round wire nails Put one at the top, come an inch or so down from where the the top or the apex, if you like, is of the uh, the side piece, just so you don't split the top of that. Uh, and just come about half an inch or 10 mil inside from the edge of this back piece. Like so, make sure you're still lined up at the back because these can move about a bit, obviously when you're banging and crashing around. Same again, about an inch in from the bottom, or an inch up from the bottom, and 10 millimeters in from the side. There we go, that's one side on. Now, we just need to turn around this side. And as you can see, line, the line up there, it's not very clear. That's my 40 mil line that we did a minute ago. And line up the side, two more nails, and again, come about an inch in from the end of, or the, 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 the base of your side piece, and 10 mil in from the edge. Again, another nail. In there, like that. Again, make sure this edge is all nice and flush and lined up. Inch down, 10 mil in. Okay, so now, 
you've got two sides. So now we can start thinking about the roof, which is nice and easy. On the blue tit and the great tit, uh, the roof actually has a hinge uh, across here um, to enable you to then lift the roof up. Obviously, because the front on a blue tit and great tit is closed up, they're whole nesting birds. They like to get in the hole into uh, a, an enclosed cavity, if you like, whereas robins like an open fronted box. So we're going to put a face on this in a moment, but not all the way up. So you don't need to have a hinge lid on this, so it can be just fixed straight to the top. So as simple as making sure that everything is lined up nice and flush on your sides. Then we can get a nail. Again, about 10 mil in, an inch back, 10 mil in from the edges. Make sure it's flush. And again, two nails each side is sufficient here. And then we just make sure the back is nice and tight and the sides are flush again. in there Ooh. try not to drop your nails so just make sure you're all nice and lined up this side again and another nail towards the top Now we have a roof, looking good. However, we still need um, the front to go on and then the bottom piece obviously to fill that in. So uh, the front normally I just do as a hundred mil or four inches up the face, which is ample. Some Canada geese going over now. <laughs> so bring back the big piece of timber. Mark in 100 mil from the edge. And then we can square that using the saw. The beauty of these saws is they actually have a 90 degree angle uh, just there. So that is 90 degrees, that's 45 degrees. So if you're ever short of a square, then you just use a saw, which is great. So just mark that. And then I can cut that off. So now we have our front piece Obviously that can sit nicely across the front, like that. If you find any big splinters, just pull them off. And a few more nails again, two on each side is ample here. That one hit a bit of a knot there, so he's bent over, but that's okay. Make sure you're all flush on your sides. Right, now, looking a bit more like a box, isn't it? So, okay, we've got the front on, the roof on, the sides on, just the base to think about. So all you need to do is obviously the gravel board should be the same width there. So you can just use the full width of the gravel board. It's only that dimension from side to side that you need to measure. So I'm gonna measure that now. It's about 103 mil. Yep, yeah. so 103 mil. I'll get a piece cut off this timber. Wear it off. Now with a 
little bit of look. Just nicely snug. And all you have to do with that is just tap it in. Just so it's flush with the sides. There we go. And then all I do is put a nail in each side just to hold that in place. You're going to need one because it's not going to drop out. There you have it. So there you have one times robin box. Now you can alter the height of this front panel here. Uh, I normally just do four inches or 100 mil, that's nice. A little opening for them to get in and out of, absolutely perfect. Nice overhang on the front so you can see the rainwater can nicely drop away from the face of the box there so everything stays nice and dry. All the chicks and nests and material and everything else. And that is one solid little box in about, what, 15 minutes? <laughs> So get a couple of these knocked up. Now in terms of where to site these boxes, they always want to be on a north or an east facing wall. Don't put them on a south or a west facing wall because the chicks can get too hot and die. It's not as bad with an open fronted box, but of course with tip boxes where everything is, in, is enclosed, bar a little hole, they can get obviously very hot, but it's it can be the same situation obviously on a hot summer's day for the chicks of these robins. So do put them on a north or east facing wall. In terms of height, I mean, robins will nest, as I've said, almost at ground level. Uh, so, but ideally anywhere from sort of four foot upwards, if you can be aware of, of cats gaining access, because of course, nice little hole like that is easy for them to get a pour in and out uh, compared to the blue tits, which of course they can't, the great tip boxes, they can't get their paws in. So yeah, a lot more open to predation from cats. So sight it not on the top of your fence, because of course cats can sit on the top of this, reach in and grab the chicks, uh, but stick it on a wall, anywhere you like, any height you like, as long as it is away from the reach of these predators, as I say. So, and preferably in cover. Robins absolutely love cover. So wedge it in a load of ivy where you can't even see it yourself. I guarantee a robin will find it and utilize it, no doubt about it. So. Uh, in terms of the maintenance and looking after these boxes, all I tend to do is clean out the old nest material at the end of each season, pour some boiling water in, and of course, what you want to do that I haven't done yet, but I will do, is put a few drainage holes in the bottom uh, just to allow the water to then drain out, of course. Uh, but then, yeah, pour some boiling water in to just get rid of any fleas, ticks, anything like that that have maybe um, you've got themselves in this nest in the summer months. So it's nice and sterilised for the new birds when they come back to use it, no doubt, in the spring. So, there you have your very own robin box. I'm going to go and make another one of these now, and then I'm going to go and put them up in the morning. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed the video. Give the video a like, of course, and any comments, drop them below, and I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'll be bringing you many more videos on how you can help birds um, butterflies, bees, everything else in your own garden, but in particular, I will be doing a bit of an S-Box series as and when I get time. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.